I'm Christy. I'm one of the staff doctors here at Dove Lewis, and I'm just going to talk a little bit about scruffing and how it sort of changed over the years and how many common misperceptions there are out there, um, what kind of patients you really, really should not scruff, um, just go over a little bit about scruffing. We have here actually an excellent example of a cat that is going to be very difficult to scruff. There's a most common misconception is that scruffing is always a comforting thing for cats and it's because that's what their mommy did to them when they were a kitten. But what we know about the behavior of cats is that they don't just scruff each other associated with mother and offspring behavior. They also um, use scruffing during mating behavior, but also during aggression behavior. So um, once you have an adult cat, you're looking at um, scruffing being a much more aggressive behavior for you as a handler. Um, so that's part of why behavior wise, we understand a little better that scruffing is not the right answer for most cats. A lot of cats really do great with less restraint. And so a lot of cats for a full exam, I just examine by myself because I can stroke them with one hand while pulling off my exam with my other hand and get a lot further than I would if I was trying to hold them down and scruff them in order to look at everything and make a friend in the process a lot of the time. Um, there are some kitties that are really hard to scruff. One example of them is cats with a more generous body condition. So those cats, to be perfectly frank, they, they just don't even have a lot of scruff. And I'm sure that many of you have experienced where you've gone to try and, um, and grab the scruff on that cranky blocked cat who weighs 20 pounds and you find that there's just nothing there to grab. So you instantly have to come up with some other alternatives for those cats. Um, the other cats that behaviorally I think you should be very aware of are those cats that when you go in to greet them and meet them, the first thing that they do is scrunch their necks down and suck their heads in. Those are cats that are absolutely terrified of what you're going to do. They assume and know that you're going to scruff them because that's the way that they've been handled probably uh, at other veterinary clinics or maybe even at your clinic before. And you have ways to try and, and alter that fear in them and alter that, um, that perception that as soon as you try and touch them, the first thing that you're going to do is to go in and try and scruff them. And so you can make friends with your patients before you try and restrain them. It certainly is okay to pet them and love on them and sort of break the ice a little bit before you try and pull them out of their carriers. Top loading carriers are a great thing to train your clients to have. And if they don't have a top loading carrier, having a, making sure that they don't have a carrier that they've zip tied together so that you can actually take them apart and potentially examine a kitty right in their carrier is wonderful. Um, and so those things can all help you to break the ice with your patients and before you need to get an exam. If you do need to do a scruff, it should actually be something that you ease into. It shouldn't be a, a grab and so you should ease into it. So if I really needed better control of this patient for something like x-rays, then I would actually ease into, ease into a scruff so that I was not appearing to be aggressive. And then I would gradually manipulate the, the pet into the position that I need. If she wants to reach out and grab the side of the table, I'll actually let her. I'll give her some freedom so she doesn't feel like I'm terribly oppressive to her. But I also want to make sure that she's comfortable. And sometimes once she's down, she's perfectly happy to stay there without maintaining the scruff. So even if you need a scruff to position an animal, you don't necessarily always have to keep holding it. Um, the patients out there medically that you should avoid scruffing, there are a few of those. One of those are your brachycephalic cats. And so brachycephalic cats have a very shallow orbit. And while it's fairly unlikely that you're actually going to cause the eye to come out of the socket, as you might fear, because they look like they might pop out, if you scruff those kitties by pulling the skin back on their forehead, you're causing their eyes to protrude further. And when their eyes protrude further, they're just more likely to be damaged. And so you're at much higher risk for corneal damage and ocular damage in those patients. Any patient that has had a head trauma, you want to try and avoid scruffing them because putting too much pressure on their scruff for too long puts pressure on their jugular veins and can cause issues with venous return. So we don't want to increase intracranial pressure in an animal that's already had head trauma. We have patients that have wounds or injuries around the neck. Any of those guys, you want to try and avoid scruffing them. And it's a really good 
testament to us for finding other ways to restrain our kitties, the fact that we can't just scruff them all. Um, one of the best ways to manage kitties is just a simple towel and bundling them up in a towel in order to get an exam, pulling the parts that you need out of the towel as you go. Um, that can be enough to help you to get through a full exam without a scruff at all. Um, you can also use things like cat bags. They're really good. And we have cats here that are particularly cantankerous because it's really nice in day practice that you might be able to see a cat today, recognize that it's too fractious for um, an exam and send it home with a nice whopping dose of gabapentin, some nice chemical restraint to use for its next visit. Um, that's a lot harder to do in an emergency situation. And here in the emergency clinic, e-collars are actually one of our best um, best defenses against the really cranky cat because you can quite easily get a longer e-collar than we would normally clinically use in a cat around them without getting anywhere within range of their uh, mouth for a bite. We can have their feet restrained with a towel and we can quite, uh, we can quite effectively restrain even a pretty rowdy cat with those, uh, those techniques. And then potentially get some sedation on board to calm them down and let them relax before they get a full exam. So these are some of the things that you should think about when it comes time to restrain or scruff a cat and retrain yourself to the way that you're thinking. Try not to aggressively go in to scruff a cat because doing that is actually a movement of dominance and aggression and that's gonna be received as a movement of dominance and aggression towards the cat. And if you just make friends with them, sometimes they'll just lay there.